Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorecom, in which we speak to small cap executives right after they put out important news. With us today, do I have to introduce him? Does anybody not know who he is? <laughs> Sheldon Nimitosh, founder, chairman, CEO of 3D Capital, IDK. I, I don't even have to say this on the CSE, IDKFF for our friends uh, in the United States. Sheldon, a lot of great news you've been putting out. Uh, let's get caught up. First of all, how are you? How's the week treat you? Because you've been having a lot of great success lately. Well, I'm depressed, George. The week's over almost. And uh, I, you know, at the adrenaline and it was a short week, but it was a great week, a really very newsworthy week uh, and very exciting. But yeah, maybe I got to, I got to chill for a couple of days and uh, I got tons of reading to do and then go back at it on Monday morning. Yeah, you've had some great success in some of your portfolio companies just this week, this month. So let's talk about a couple of sectors. You've made some big investments in psychedelics. One was private in Nirvana, that's pre-IPO, and one was public in M2 Bio. Uh, what is it about psychedelics that's got you psyched up? Huh. Well, it's it's a paradigm shift. Um, and for people that actually have used the products, they are more committed than the people that want to make money off the products. And it's because they're extremely helpful. They've always been scientifically potentially great, but you know, with the laws of America, the DEA prohibited and so forth, very similar to the cycle that everybody went through in cannabis and now realizing the medicinal values of cannabis uh, the values over alcohol and 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 um, opi opioids and other things for pain, depression, anxiety, et cetera, et cetera. I think psychedelics, though, have long lasting effects. They're not just sort of alleviation from a short term problem. We've done a lot of research uh, into the space. It's the tip of the iceberg. It's international. It's a wave that is just going to, I think, dwarf the cannabis uh, space. But what people have to understand Agreed. is that we're talking here real science, real biotech. And that's what we're interested in. We're not into the nutraceutical style or microdosing and, and uh, selling um, placebo mushrooms or anything. We're into the real key in ingredients and activations that these molecules provide and that have gone through clinical trials and have real sponsorship and a uh, real potential in bringing new drugs onto the market. So we have just seen the beginning, just the, it's, uh, people use the word tip of the iceberg. We haven't even, we're sort of not even at the, necessarily at the tip, we're above the tip, we're just hovering over. Um, I think this is, this is um, going to be a wave that is long lasting, deep and very real. But as I've said before, you know, a lot of red herrings, a lot of BS out there. Be very oh. careful. And when you say, um, and when you say tip of the iceberg, I mean, and, or more importantly, you said that it's going to be bigger than cannabis. I agree with that statement because even though cannabis got legalized, uh, and let's now break. I'm not talking the rec side. The rec is is a different sort of beast, right? I'm talking medicinal. Medical. Okay. All right. Yeah, because I'm hearing unbelievable anecdotal stories from people who have been. Uh, doing ketamine and other treatments and they say it's changing their lives yeah and we know that you know that's that that's uh we're all touched by people around us or even ourselves who suffer from anxiety or depression or or, or those kind of things i was speaking to a ceo the other day who said they're seeing unbelievable results in soldiers with ptsd and i said how long is it taking goes three four months of treatment and we're turning these guys around yeah. So, so it's unbelievable. Long, la long lasting. They've done longitudinal studies. Uh, there's not as much data as there should be because it was not allowed. Uh, but really, it's long lasting and is changing new pathways to your brain. Uh, as some, as 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 somebody uh, who we've backed, who I consider one of the top science uh, brains in the space, he talks about how it liberates your brain. It allows you to control the dominion of your own brain. Uh, it really opens up the blood flows and the thinking and the cross pollination. And um, and I'm a believer. Yeah, the synapses just start flying. So let's talk right. about a couple of the investments you made. Nirvana, 
that's still private. And by the way, for everybody at home, that's the, you know, this is the big advantage of 3D capital. You and I, for the most part at home, don't get a chance to participate in these pre-IPO offerings. 3D Capital does. Uh, Nirvana, why'd you make that investment? That was a big one. Well, um, you know, I'll keep it simple. Uh, the, the team, the scientific team, uh, you're talking here, professors from Purdue University, John Hopkins, Ground Zero in California, research actually affiliates in India, Italy, deep, deep, deep science, uh, been in the space since the Nichols Institute, work with Robert Overlander, who worked at the Nichols Institute as a fellow. So we're talking here going back a long time. So the real deal, the real people, the real science, the real technology. Unusual to put a team together like that in today's world, because there aren't that many that have been in it for that period of time. If you read Michael Pollan's book, it really talks about the whole history since the 60s. And there's really only a handful of credible names. Uh, and 3D capital investors now own that, right? So yes. I'm not sure how much you can tell us, but how early was was 3D, you know, able to get in? I'm not sure if you're if you're able to share valuation well, or anything like that. Yeah, let's just say we were the first money. So doesn't um, get any better than that. It's as close to the beginning as possible. We're advisors to the company. Uh, we're now uh, talking with major lead investors to doing you know, around substantially above ours and the value added we, we brought to the table, Jackson, my son uh, and myself is that, you know, we help them. We help them with the structure of the company, the PowerPoint, the, the, the strategy, et cetera. And for that, you know, we, we became equity investors. We never got anything for nothing or paid as advisors or anything like that. We invested because we believe that this is, this is a, a project that does not come along very often. And we wanted skin in the game. And um, we think it's going to be one of the hottest IPOs. And we expect that to occur around May. And you just took the words out of my mouth because you got to say, when do you think everyone's going to uh, get a chance to take a look at Nirvana? So, I mean, that excites me, right? I'm a shareholder of, of 3D Capital. And that excites me to know that that's going to be coming in May. And and we're some of the first money. So yeah, that's and we And we basically own just under 10% of the company. So a meaningful stake. M2 bio. That's a big one. Uh, about $450,000. If I recall, that was a, that was a big one that you made there. Uh, why, why M2 bio? Well, it's a sleeper and it, it's a whole long story that not to get into, but it was a personal relationship that connected me with the company of somebody I knew for a long time, but I had not seen in 10 years. And it's out of Cape Town. Uh, these research is out of the University of Barcelona and in University of Pretoria. And what they're doing is very fascinating, very advanced. The barrier to for investors has been that it's sort of one of these unqualified companies that's applying to get onto the pink sheets in the US. It trades there, but it's really not a registered company. But that's all about to change in the next few weeks. So we invested almost as though it was a private company. Uh, but the, they're going to be doing trials in the coming months. Their science is very strong. They have other aspects of their operation. The company is very well run. And uh, we think it's a massive sleeper. Um, so we'll be talking a lot about that once it becomes a tradable company so that other investors who, who like to invest alongside 3D Capital are able to participate in the public market. There is a quote, it does trade, but there's a lot of restrictions on that by the US regulators. Uh, do you think given your thesis on psychedelics, is this just the beginning? Do you, do you expect 3D Capital to continue making uh, smart investments into the psychedelic space for next couple of years? Yes, I think so. Um, but it's, it's about finding best of breed. And one can't just go out and say, well, I'm just gonna go out and buy a bunch of psychedelic stocks because you're gonna get hurt and burnt eventually because it's gonna be very volatile um, uh, area. And just, you know, when a lot of money tries to go through the same opening at the same time, you know what that's like. And, and in the same way on, on the way out. Uh, so um, we will be, but we're gonna be very opportunistic. Switching gears. We're now we're we're going from psychedelics 
to resources in Botswana, right? Uh, you announced February 16th that premium nickels, I'm going to read the headline, premium nickel resources selected as preferred bidder in BCL liquidation process and 3D Capital owns 9.13% of premium nickel. Uh, how big is this? Well, I don't normally like to arm wave and say something is massive, but this could be truly massive. Uh, we are in a world today where nickel is is in substantial uh, supply shortage, as is quality copper at good grades. And this property has them both. So it's an old mine that we plan on restarting and then exploring that what we think has great exploration potential. Uh, but we've been working on this for three years. So this is not something that, you know, you just stepped in. There was lots of competition. Uh, we have a world-class team that we put together. This was very important. This has been a year and a half of due diligence, a, a world-class application. Um, and now we've won the exclusivity to acquire the bidding process in, for the bidding process for the assets. So it's, it's ours for the taking. If, you know, we go through the process as the Botswanian government has outlined. And I would say that this is, you know, sometimes you can use the word, this is a company maker, but this is even beyond that. And is probably the number one most exciting leveraged potential investment that IDK has today. I don't want to pontificate or, 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 or guess on what I think uh, the value could be, but let's just say it is, I'm extremely excited and proud that our team won this exclusivity bid. So to be clear, two things. First, uh, premium nickel is the preferred bidder. Uh, so they haven't got it yet, but they're gonna they're gonna be given the first shot at it, correct? Yes, and and there's there's it's a much it forms part of a much deeper non-disclosure based agreement with the trustee and the government of the process and what's necessary. And we believe at the end of the day we will be acquiring this asset. So now I'm gonna play devil's advocate. Um, and I'm not one to doubt you, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's good to have good conversation. Sure. It's this fantastic asset, world-class asset. Explain to investors why it's in a liquidation process. Oh, well, it was a mine that was uh, operated by the government and commodity prices went through a long bear market and it just became a very difficult property to maintain uh, there were environmental challenges, there were operating challenges, and the commodity prices were not high enough to really make it a profitable operation. That's some while ago. The world has entirely changed now. Uh, nickel went through, I think, $8,000 a ton. Copper's over $4. Dr. Copper's, they call it. Unbelievable. Uh, so we are into the two of the hottest commodities uh, especially with the EV market, uh, energy vehicles today, and the demand for nickel. Um, so we're here, I would say, the right place at the right time, but it wasn't always like that. And that's what led to the property going into receivership. And that's why I want to ask that question. I mean, I had a pretty good idea what the answer was, but there are going to be investors at home saying, well, how good can it be if it's in liquidation? And what's important for them to realize is you guys started this process three years ago. Yeah, and three the property, years ago, nickel, copper didn't look anything like they looked that, that, that like they look. So, another example, Sheldon, of how you guys are able to jump on stuff early when nobody wants it, when nobody's interested, and that's what makes that's what's always made you successful, right? That you're not yeah. chasing trends; you get there before, when nobody wants something. And it's also the opposite of being passive. You know, we went, we found it, we put the bid together, we found the world-class team that could execute this transaction. Uh, we raised millions to get to this point, even though the risk was it could be worth zero. Uh, so that that's why I like to say in 3D, you know, we're, we're hands-on and we're value-added. We're not just throwing dart and going, well, I'm going to buy this stock, so you can too, so why should you on 3D Capital? Well, yeah. these are... This is a situation that's Love just it. not available to the general public. So if everything goes well, Sheldon, uh, you know, there's a bidding process, but if everything generally goes well, how do you see this 
playing out in the next three, six, nine months? Well, um, you know, we have to, we have some negotiations to do. Uh, we have a bit more capital to raise. Uh, ultimately, we, we will prevail and we will, we will own the asset. Uh, then uh, PNR, which is the subsidiary or the company that we own our nine point plus percentage in, it will go public and will be a standalone company on its own. And will, its job will be to reopen this mine and to explore for more uh, minerals. All right, ballpark timeline. What are you guys thinking? Uh, I'm not looking for an exact date. and We're not going to pin you down, but ballpark timeline. What are you thinking if if all goes well? Because we know that's the uh, things don't all go well. But generally speaking, what are you guys expecting? Well, the exclusivity periods for six months. We're hoping to accelerate that. So everything's going to happen within 12 months in terms of visibility of this as an independent asset that trades in an independent entity. And people are going to be able to calculate much better what the value is, the fair value. Um, so rather than put any specific timelines or pressures on anybody, I would say within 12 months. Okay. Yeah, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Uh, the other big piece of news you uh, that you put out were your financials uh, for the last, for the, for the quarter ended December 31st. Uh, and more and and maybe broader scope for the six month end of December 31st, as well as your first net asset value, your first monthly net asset value. Uh, let's first talk about the results. Man, six months end of December 31st, 2020, net investment and digital asset gains 16.7 million. <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty astonishing. Uh, for for the for the that's where the period just ended December thirty first. That's before what's been happening uh, over the last couple of months. Is uh, are all the roosters coming home to roost? Is that the is that the term where you're finally you you're, you're getting the benefit of all the seeds that you've been planting for the last couple of years? Well, I would say that's that's true, and and you know, since that period of time, we planted a number more. Yep. And uh, some of the results of even investments within the last four to six months have, have really sprung to life. There's no question we are an extremely buoyant market. Um, the, the market is across the board. As you know, we invest in disruptive technology and invest in junior mining. And it's not been the mining side that has driven this value. It's, it's been the technology side. Um, and we've We've made some new investments, and the they've just opened up substantially. One of our companies, uh, St. George's, a name that you know well, George, and has been around for some time, you know uh, has been working on battery recycling technology. Uh, no one respected their technology. They have a lithium extraction technology. And so, as people know, we did a, an investment in them and the financing, and we swapped some shares, actually, at $0.10 cents a share. On, on, on the company, it's almost 80 cents today. And this has all occurred in the last 30 days. Um, we've invested in a Bitcoin miner that, you know, we invested at nine cents two months ago. It's now $1.70 because of the value price of Bitcoin. Did not expect that. $1.65 um, at, you know, this, ver at this very moment. Yeah. And, uh, you know, volatile stock as is the digital currency uh, space. Um, we uh, are involved now in um, artificial intelligence for mining, and we invested in the company and then found out subsequent to our investment that they also are using their technology to find landmines, a company called Wind Geotech. We invested at six cents and then did further investing in the market. It's now 40 cents. Um, so we're, uh, we're finding that you know, a lot of the companies have just sprung to life by one factor or another. Now we do have a bull market out there, so things can change. But on the other hand, these are all very disruptive technologies that I believe have real application in, in, in the real world. These are not promotional dreams. And, and what's, you know, in a, in a bullish environment, a lot of investors can get burned because they're just buying high, hoping to sell higher. But in the case of 3D Capital, your initial positions in all of these are so low that you've completely de-risked them. I mean, the only thing that can happen is you can make a lower return. So instead of making uh, 
400% return. You might have to settle for a 275% return, but you're not playing with fire, right? Like most other people, which is like you said earlier, throw something at dartboard. I think that George Com can go from $1.50 to $5, only see it go down to 75 cents, you get burned. You are buying companies at the, like Nirvana, how you talked about earlier, first money in, you know, now with premium nickel, you know, you've been there for three years when nobody else wanted that project. So is it safe to say you've got a lot of cushion here? Oh, I, a tremendous amount. And, you know, the first rule is know what you're investing in. And we know what we're investing in. And so even if the value declines, we're going to evaluate it and go, well, why did it decline? And the first question is, well, maybe this is just a market correction. So we have lots of dry powder. We'll maybe at, buy more of something that we know and like. If there's a problem, we can help solve that problem. Uh, whereas the individual investor, yeah. he sees a problem in a company and he goes, uh-oh, I don't want any of that. They have to take their loss. So in many cases, we, we can turn a company around if it, if it has challenges that are, say, more micro to that specific business as opposed to the general market declining of which, you know, it will take everything down with it. But that's, that's okay because our businesses are not meant to be short-term businesses. We're playing this for a much longer period of time. Just like PNR took us three years, when we originally put it together, the price of nickel and copper was not that interesting to most people. So you know, we had to have, through the test of time, uh, the vision to, to stay with it. And I would say everything we're investing in, we believe we're at the beginning of the ball game, not at the end. And I'm glad you brought that up because, uh, you know, there are a lot of new investors who look up to you, who are entering the markets, they're finding out about Sheldon and Wintosh. I'm finding that I've had to go on to social media the last couple of weeks because I started seeing more and more, whether it's on Discord groups or Facebook groups or Twitter, that you'd see investors saying, ABC widgets need to have some news today. AB, XYZ technologies, I, I hope it goes up today. And I just went on there and said, look, and, and, and I want you to echo this because obviously you've had a thousand times more success than I have, but I'm telling people all of my biggest wins, six, even seven digit wins have come from being patient with a great company and giving it two, three, four years to do what it has to do, as opposed to, I hope XYZ Technologies goes up today in price. You've obviously, you're even better than that than I am. Uh, look, three years of working on premium nickel. Uh, uh, what message do you have for investors who sometimes will get impatient with a, with a stocks, with a price progress when they should be looking at the company progress and how you do it? Yeah, I think that uh, everybody wants to be in the market today. Everybody's at home. Zoom is king. It's easy to press buttons. And it's easy to get emotionally attached to how a stock trades versus the business underlying fundamentals. Very difficult discipline to distinguish between the thrill of the game and the academic understanding and research of what a company does. And it's easy to get caught up. You're, you've got a, an outstanding company in, in your um, uh, portfolio, or, or should I say your stable of horses called Pyrogenesis. And you talked to me about that company it was 25 cents. And I knew that that was going to be a long haul, but it wasn't such a long haul. But if I had bought it at 25 cents, and the next thing I know, it's $3. It's very tempting just to go, wow, I mean, I'm going to sell. Sure. And then it went up to $6 and back to three. And many people that bought it at five and six suddenly go, uh-oh, I'm nervous, I'm selling. Yet, in fact, it can be a $100 stock. So you, you get caught up in the fear and the greed of trading. And I would say this is the biggest risk that we face in the market today. And everybody, including myself, I love it when a stock goes up and I want to buy more. But then when it falls, I suddenly go, why did I buy more? Did I need more? Or you know, it is, it, you become detached from the discipline of what you're here to do. And that is invest, not trade or gamble and so forth. And, um, you know, I went on an interview a couple of weeks ago to talk about GameStop. 
and why I basically said it's a race to zero because it's a broken business model. But people could not resist the fact that they knew somebody that bought it at 10, somebody that bought it at 50, somebody bought it at 100, 200, 300, now it's 400. And it just became a tulip crisis. That's what it was, you know, extraordinary delusions and the madness of crowds. A tough read, but people should read that book. And a bit of that went on, and that's a snippet of what goes on on a more macrocosm, not a microcosm in the sense of the small micro stocks. It is a microcosm as it relates to the stock market because it really is not that significant when it comes to the Dow Jones and other big, bigger cap stocks. But it shows you what can happen when there's a cycle of greed. And then the reverse has happened. It's now down to $40 as the cycle of fear of people thought they were investing. They were not investing. So that is the biggest challenge, I think, that we all face in a market that has been great to everybody and a very difficult uh, time in this pandemic. In your, but in your career, though, you've been part of billion-dollar exits, plural. You've been part of billion-dollar exits. You've been part of mid hundred million, you know, $500 million exits. Uh, is it fair to say that your biggest wins came from being patient and always reevaluating the company, not the stock? So you don't take, so you don't buy a stock at 50 cents and sell it two just because it's up four times you buy. Like I did that with first quantum minerals when I just started out investing years ago, I bought the stock at 70 cents. And I sold it at four dollars, and that was a great that was a great win. But I was young, and all I focused on was the gain. And lo and behold, first quantum went on to become a hundred and fifty, hundred and seventy five dollars stock, right? And if I had just focused on the company and reevaluating every so often, then I wouldn't have sold. So is it fair to say, Sheldon, and everyone at home, that's how your biggest wins have come? You know, avoiding the temptation of a of an early win and sticking with a good company? Yeah, without question. And that comes down to, again, understanding what you own. Markets always climb a wall of worry. So there's always the temptation that, oh, it's a two. Uh, oh, it just fell to 180. It's probably going to go down to 50 cents. I should sell. So people get caught up in the mentality and the psychology of the trading, not on the actual facts and details, which by the way, is hard work. You know, it's not easy to keep on yes. top of a company and determine whether or not they're on path. And everybody knows the situations that went up to $10 and then back down to 25 cents because really they weren't what they thought they were. And they got tricked by the fact that the stock was, was climbing. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with taking a profit. You know, it's actually a good discipline. Uh, take some money off the table, reduce your costs, get your costs down to zero. You don't have to worry about it. Then you'll be less, you'll make smarter decisions around yes. the, 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 the remaining shares that you own than you will be if you're all in. So it's a long man. It's a long-term game to make the big one, big scores. Um, and also the markets have to be right. We happen to be in the right market, but just because the stock's gone on, gone up out there it doesn't necessarily mean it deserves being up there and on the other hand just because something falls it doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to fall all the way it's up to everybody to do as much research and rely on experts and people who are hands-on not just sort of dart throwers or stock pickers well one company you've talked about in the pa in the past that's kind of going through a small version of that right now is loop insights right uh, the stock's down to the dollar thirty-five range. I saw uh, yesterday. Um, so you got some people panicking, but you've you've called Loop Insights for a long time, saying it's a transformative company. Has your does your thesis change on Loop Insights just because it's going through some, you know, short-term weakness, or or do you or do you keep adding because you love the quality? And and I'm not saying don't tell us if you're buying Loop because I can't ask that. But generally speaking, is that a situation where you say, hey, I love this company, I'm buying more? Well, we, I will answer that. And we've, and we've maintained our conviction more than ever. Uh, the price goes down, uh, the risk reward rises and our conviction has not changed. 
We have bought shares as, as low as $1.30 yesterday. And um, I believe that it's gone through a situation where when we originally invested at 10 cents and it went up to almost $3, you know, it went up too far too fast, but it didn't make us change our mind that, okay, we should cash out and move on to the to the next investment. But you don't have regrets, right? You don't say, because some investors will say, oh, I should have sold it all at 270 and no, then back in at half at price. All. You not don't, at all. your mind doesn't think that way, right? No, because our model hasn't changed. It's only improved. And what people don't understand is they're dealing with fortune companies. When you deal with Teluses of the world and Nippon, I mean, the company, we, we're all spoiled that they that the management was able to pull off those deals as fast as they did. Um, and I think we all got a bit kind of so confident that this would be a weekly thing and there'd be another one, another one, and another one. And it just, they don't, it, it doesn't have, the world doesn't work that way. And also as a company that's come from a zero start in terms of revenue and the company still has to demonstrate what its revenue model is to investors. So there's still a lot of learning to do, but our basic understanding of this technology and how it can really manifest itself, like this big white deal it just announced, uh, the, numbers, the numbers are huge. But, you know, th there's another problem that I've talked about when we talked about GameStop, and I've talked about this with another company in our portfolio called Avicana. There's a major short initiative out there with many, many of these junior companies. And I think uh, I, I, I affectionately call Loop uh, a matrix because it's a, it is about a matrix. Uh, has been a target of shorts, and um, they win in the short run, never in the long run. So companies like Avicana, where the short position is so large that they can't even cover, because it probably is as many shares as there is in the float, and that's what happened with GameStop. And then one day the Piper, uh, you know sings and 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 real value always comes to the surface and the same thing will happen with with loop slash matrix in the short run the shorts are having their way but that will change let's talk about idk stock you put out a net asset value your first one uh 90 cents uh so tell us about that number uh and and how you feel about the portfolio going forward well, we're very proud uh, of, of that number. It was a turnaround a quarter from us. I think the NAV went from maybe 40 cents or so to 90 cents. Yep. Um, and uh, it's reflected the underlying portfolio, if I can call it that. Uh, and, you know, what the companies I've mentioned to you uh, on this call have all done very well in February. So we feel that that, that trend is going to continue. Um, we feel, and I feel, um, as when I ran a previous company that, uh, we're capable of trading at two and a half times, two to three times NAV, because when you work on a company like premier nickel and you're working on it, working on it. And then next thing, you know, you're awarded that exclusivity and that value can be worth an enormous amount of money that is looking in the forward uh world not in the backward world the backward world is that's an nav that's already there we that's knowledge we know all about that that's a mark to market value that's uh, an accounting term and and that's how we determined our net asset value per share but we have a huge pipeline of projects that have yet to be completed and are coming into the company and investors, sophisticated investors have understood that these disruptive technologies that we have uh, more access to, in some cases exclusive access, is worth something to a shareholder who wants to own 3D capital, and that it shouldn't be based on looking at just the rear view mirror. So I've always felt that we should trade at a multiple to NAV. I've, I, I at the length of uh, the period of time that I ran Pine Tree Capital, it was two and a half times for a lot of that period. And I think that the same thing is going to be true with uh, 3D Capital in the long run. How do you uh, how do you feel about the growth prospects of the port? 
of the, of the portfolio right now. Cause the market cap, the company's market cap is essentially $50 million. Right. And it sounds like just premier nickel alone, you know, could be worth that to the company uh, in the next 24 months. So, you know, when you look forward, how, how happy are you on a scale of one to 10? Cause no, you can't make projections, but how happy are you with the makeup of the portfolio right now and how it's, how it's poised or not poised for growth? I'm ecstatic. <laughs> I love it. You don't need to say more than that. But uh, yeah, congratulations on that, on that number. Uh, congratulations on that massive net investment and digital assets gains, uh, you know, $16, $16 million for the six months ended. That's, that's incredible. I don't want to call it a turnaround because some people call it a turnaround. That's just a case of, all the seeds you've been planting while you were quiet. People were wondering, what's Sheldon doing and what's he up to now? And you and I sometimes get into, I don't want to call it debates, but you know, firm discussions where I'd say, Sheldon, you got to tell people what you're doing. You, we, and you said, George, I'm just going to plant all my seeds and I don't want to create hype and build. I'm just going to plant my seeds and then let, let the harvest do the talking. And here we are. Is it fair to say, Sheldon, that you're in partial harvest, but you've got a ton of seeds that are still, you know, being watered and haven't even started thinking about growing yet? It's a very minimal harvest, if you if you want to call it that. Um, right. There's still a lot to grow, uh, height-wise, width-wise, you know, longevity-wise. This is so as I mentioned it, like in psychedelics, so close to the beginning, um, you know, now what more that, that we have now that we've never had before is an asset base. And that asset base allows us to grow and allows us access to more deals. And our, our deal flow is, is just, you know, more than any normal company can handle. And I'm talking about deals where we're, we're being asked because people know we can add value to come in at the very earliest stage, Pref preferable deals, preferable deals to even brokers that invest in these professionally. So um, it's, it's uh, our reputation, uh, capital, if you will, is growing and people want to be associated with the company. And I just want the right people, the right shareholders. This is only, this is, this is not a stock for everybody. Uh, it's for those that want access and, diversification in emerging disruptive technologies, junior mining that, you know, I believe is, is on the verge of a major comeback. Um, but it's not for, we're not competing with the ETFs that people talk about out there. Um, it's really a very specialty situation for those that want to play a very dangerous market and uh, in the junior market. But harvesting, um, we've done some, because we don't go out and do capital raises very often. So we have to eat what we kill. Um, but I would say that the best is so far yet to come. Yeah, I'm actually going to disagree with you when you say 3D capital isn't for everybody. If you're a small cap investor, I think 3D capital is for everybody. Now, it's up to everybody who's watching this. No financial advice. It's up to you to decide what price you want to pay for 3D capital. So, you know, but if you're a small cap investor, you have to, to me, you have to have 3D capital in your portfolio because you're never going to get access to Nirvana Life Sciences as the first money in. You're never going to get access to premium nickel resources and this massive cobalt, uh, copper nickel project in Botswana, right? Uh, so are you okay with me disagreeing with you on that? But I think if you're a small sure. investor, you just have to have some. Capital. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, you know, I always, you know, like to, uh, you know, put out the disclaimer about widows and orphans and elderly people and, you know, probably people that, that need return more than the others. And I've had these discussions with those that talk about GIC rates and so forth and preservation of capital. When on the other hand, people don't realize that there is a real inflation rate out there and we're all, all our money is being, you know, whittled down. And, and that's one of the reasons why 
we invest in these disruptive companies and hard assets because fiat money is declining. It, it is depreciating. Digital currencies are rising. They are expanding. So risk is a funny term, but I always like to just caution everyone to even do their work on, on 3D before yep. investing. Yep. That's why I said it's up to everyone at home to, cho to choose what value they want to pay for it. But uh, that's... But fair enough, of course. And since you brought it up, I was going to finish it there. But since you got brought it up, you from the first time when when I finally did drag you onto video last year, one of the first things we talked about was digital currency, cryptocurrencies. And now you've got I don't even know where Bitcoin is today. I haven't checked the last yesterday was over fifty one thousand, almost fifty five. Holy, holy bleep! Uh, what's the future of crypto i'm not talking and again i'm not asking you to project the price of bitcoin but where is digital has digital digital currencies finally established themselves as they're going to be part of our lives going forward and how much exposure does 3d capital have to that world 3d capital has a lot of a lot of a, a, sorry a lot of exposure it's only beginning to take foothold. And I, again, I always like to use the word blockchain rather than crypto, but crypto is a manifestation that comes out of blockchain and becomes a currency and uh, stable coins. We invested in a company that has a decentral, uh, a decentral finance, decentralized finance um, token that is developing called IntelliBridge. Yep, another example of a company we just invested in. And these are the types of instruments that are in such going to be in such demand but the world is again not even really scratched the surface in terms of digital the digital environment it's coming uh for sure 3d will be a major part of what we do will be in that arena because it's blue sky no pun intended we have a company called blue sky in mining but it is blue sky and i would strongly recommend that everybody somewhere have some exposure to the digital world. And if you don't get it to 3D capital, uh, no. that, that's what I've, do your due diligence, do your homework, do your research, no financial advice. But if you don't know enough about digital, if you don't know about crypto, if you don't know how to evaluate, because like Sheldon said earlier, know what you're investing in. Don't just buy something because a bunch of people on social media say you should buy it. Do your research. So that includes 3D capital. But uh, Sheldon, thanks for joining us, man. Look, it's 4.13 on Friday. Are you going to be able to, you know, make it because markets are closed and you got to wait, you know, a long time. You got, you got 48 and that's okay. Well, that's you got to okay. wait like 50, 60 hours until the markets open up. No, again. no, that's okay. I'm just being a bit facetious. Nice. I, uh, I enjoy my time with my family on the weekends and, um, I'm always reading. Uh, this is not, like this is work, of course it's work, but it's a, it's a passion, just like it's a passion for you. We often talk on weekends and we do so because the subject matters are so interesting, so compelling. Uh, you know, whether we're talking about a biotech deal, it's gonna help people. Um, so uh, no, I, uh, it's, it's, it'll be nice to just, uh, you know, turn the screen off. Well, it's been nice having you with us to end the week, Sheldon. Uh, this is going to go up on Sunday night, but people know that, you know, we're talking on, on Friday afternoon, man. Thanks for joining us. It's always, always awesome to have you yeah. have these real natural chats. And I know everyone learns something new every single time. So wishing you a great weekend with your family, your great dog. Uh, and even at some point we're going to talk, you know, over the weekend, but thanks for joining us, buddy. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, George. And you uh, have a great weekend yourself and thanks. everybody out there. Thanks, man. Thanks. For everyone at home, you've been watching or you've been listening by podcast via Spotify, Google, Apple, your favorite podcast platform, the Sheldon Inventosh. He's the founder, chairman, CEO of 3D Capital, trades on the CSC and the stock symbol IDK, and for friends in the US, IDKFF. If you're just learning about Sheldon for the first time, and that is going to be a lot of you because of the great success 3D Capital stock is having and some of their investees that we know about are having then make sure you do your due diligence, get to the uh, 3D Capital Hub on Agoracom, take a look at the profile page, give you a good history of Sheldon, give you a good overview of 3D Capital itself, and then make sure 
From there, link over, hop onto the 3D Capital website, do your due diligence, hopefully discover next trade small cap company, and don't tell me 12 months from now that we didn't tell you so. Talk to you soon. Bye.